All right. What's popping, y'all? It's time for the week. Sorry. What's popping, y'all? So it's time for the week one Saturday football games, the first big Saturday of the season. We out here. We've been doing good this season so far. We've been eating. I've been eating nice, at least. And I'm ready to eat some more. I'm ready to you know, dive into these games. We're doing 11 games today. Now, there's 31 games today. We can't do all those games. We're doing the enticing games. We're doing the games that people actually are invested in a little bit more than the others. And we're going to make these picks. We're going to show y'all. We're going to do what it do. We're going to run down these games, and we're going to get to it. So let's get it. First game is Colorado versus TCU. The game is at noon. This is the game I'm looking forward to seeing the most out of all the games this weekend because Deion Sanders is the head coach. I've been watching their offseason videos. I've been seeing what's been going down with the team. I've been in the know. I've been, you know, following them real closely and seeing if my boy Deion Sanders is going to come through. Now, Colorado is visiting TCU. They are plus 20 and a half. That amazes me. I'm shocked by that. I thought it would be a lot closer. I know TCU is good. Like, they've been solid and – they have a really good, you know, they have a really good squad every single year in and out. But, I mean, Colorado got a lot of five stars on their team now. They've been improved the whole roster immensely from last year. Uh, and I just, you know, I think that they're going to cover this easy. I think it's going to be a close game. I think they could even win the game, to be honest. Um, and, you know, the over-under 63 and a half, I definitely think that's going over easily. Um and, yeah, I think it's going to be a high-scoring, exciting game. And Colorado's going to cover that. So put that in the books, you know. What do you think? This is a tough one. Uh, when we were talking about it, you know, before we got on camera here, we saw the number was 20 and a half. That is really, really high. I know TCU was just in the national championship game. Last year they got blown out by Georgia, 65 points put on them. So, you know, they lost their quarterback. You know, they still got their head coach there. Dion's coming in. You know, he's transitioning this Colorado program. I have to take Colorado here. I don't love that. 20 and a half points is way too much. Um, Colorado's probably getting a lot of the money here, too, which probably scares me. But I'm going to take Colorado plus the 20 and a half points. TCU losing their quarterback. You know, that's a big loss. First game of the season. I think Colorado probably loses by 18 points, but I think they still cover that 20 and a half. So okay, give me the okay. points. Second game is Virginia versus Tennessee at Tennessee. This game, the spread is Tennessee minus 28. That is a huge spread for two, you know, I guess power five conference teams. Virginia is not that great of a school, uh, football school. You know, Tennessee's ranked number 12. They always high ranked when the season comes around. You know, they was 11-2 last year, and they won against Clemson in the Orange Bowl, and they finished sixth in the Associated Press poll. The Cavs, they, you know, they were struggling last year. They were 3-7, and seven, you know, Bad. their first losing season since 2016, so they've relatively been good. But, you know, that last year was a huge drop-off. They're coming back, ready for a vengeance um, to, you know, fix and kind of get back to their winning ways. Uh, my opinion on this game, you know, Tennessee's always kind of overhyped, in my opinion. I mean, they did good last year, so I'll give them that. Last year, they kind of lived up to the hype. 28 points. Virginia's, you know, they're, they're going to be fighting hard this year. <sighs> I just – I don't really – I'm not a Tennessee trust – trustee type of person i think the jalen hyatt he went high in the draft this year their best receiver from last year um you know they're they lost him they're gonna get their running backs back the quarterback i believe their quarterback did their quarterback leave they still have yeah, quarterback. He left. they got he Joe left yeah the quarterback's gone too so it's like i don't see them unless they knew quarterbacks coming in and just go bombs away i see virginia covering this 28 i'll take the points what you think I'm going to take Tennessee here. Uh, you know, Tennessee did lose, you know, their two best receivers in the draft. Um, they lost their quarterback. Joe Melton's coming in. He's got a cannon of an arm. I've seen him. He played in the Orange Bowl. He played pretty well. Um, this game will be in Nashville, too. So it's a uh, home away from home. The checkerboards are making their first appearance in Nashville. So, um, you know, I think Tennessee fans travel well there. Uh, it'll, you know, pretty much be a de facto home game for them. 
And uh, I'm going to take Tennessee minus the 28 points. They probably went by 35 points. Hold Virginia to to maybe six points. Um, I'm going to take Tennessee. I think Joe Milton has a big day. Joe Milton maybe for Heisman too this year. And that Josh Heupel, former Mizzou coach, offense. Okay. We'll see. I'm not a big Josh Heupel person, but you know. Uh, <laughs> next game. Utah State versus Iowa at mm-hmm. Iowa. So – the spread for this game is Iowa minus 23 and a half. That seems about right. You know, Iowa's a solid squad. Uh, they were pretty good last year. You know, Iowa Iowa's always pretty much a solid squad every year and in, year out. Um, Utah State, they were 6-6 six and six last year. They lost to Memphis 38-10 to 10 in the first responder bowl, which I've never heard of. Um, you know, and Iowa finished number 25 for the AP poll last year. So... You know, I think uh, this game, uh, I think Iowa, you know, they're a solid squad. Utah State's average school. I mean, I think they can put up the points. I think, you know, they were 8-5 and five last year in the Big Ten. They weren't the highest scoring team. They only averaged 18.6, which makes me nervous to take that big of a spread against that for this. Just- um, You know, the defense is their strength. I mean – they're playing a very, very, very sub tier opponent. I mean, the over under is only forty three, and so that means you know, I mean, the red that's, that's just a lot leaning towards me picking Utah State, and I think I'm gonna take Utah State just taking because Utah they're not State. a high scoring team. Like they're, they're the Iowa's the okay, but they're not out of this world. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Utah State plus twenty three and a half. What you think, man? I'm I'm fading you, just like you got a haircut last week. I'm taking the fade. I'm fading you on this one. Uh. Iowa is a team that does not score a lot of points, and that has been documented. And that is scary to take 23 and a half points when the over under is in the 40s, low 50s. But Cade McNamara coming over from Michigan, you know, he's got a little bit of chip on his shoulder. He got he got booted out of the job. He's back in the Big Ten, you know. I think he's gonna show out, get a little vengeance. Um, you know, Utah State is Utah State, they're a mid Mountain West team. Uh, versus a Big Ten team, I'm going to take Iowa, give me the minus 23 and a half, and I, I think they cover. You know, I don't love it, but I'm taking Iowa. Corn okay. fed, okay. Iowa okay. Hawkeyes. Okay, Covering okay. 23 and a half. All right. Next game, Ohio State versus Indiana. The game is at Indiana. Big it's Ten. Ohio. You said what? It's a Big Ten matchup. Yeah, Big Ten matchup. Uh, Ohio State is minus 30 against a Crazy. horrible Indiana squad, <laughs> to say the least. But Ohio State did lose the he- – uh, not Heisman Trophy winner. They lost C.J. Stroud, you know, their albeit do it, you know, all-pro guy or all-nation guy, essentially. Um, they lost – they lose guys every single year, and they regroup. Jackson's so they're not, I'm not worried about them losing people and whatnot. First Indiana's 2-16 and 16 in Big Ten play since 2021. They're definitely not winning this game. I think, you know, the Hoosiers went 0-9 in conference play during the 2021 season. So, I mean, them winning this game is pretty much a wash. If you want an easy buck, bet uh, $10,000 minus 8000 spread for money line, I'm pretty sure you'll win your money unless some tragic happens. Ohio State's, you know, it just depends how much they win by. This is an easy game for them. I think I'll take Ohio State minus 30. They know how to put up the points. They know how to just pop the top off, you know, the champagne bottle and just let it flow. They just letting it flow like Tony Braxton. So give me Ohio State minus 30. What you think, man? Yeah, this game is not very interesting. Um, you know, I think maybe Ohio State struggles a little bit in the first quarter, first half. You know, they're trying to still figure out who their quarterback is. Um, I think both guys are going to get a little bit of playing time, but they're going up against Indiana. You know, who's your daddy? You know, Ohio State's going to be your daddy this Saturday. So uh, I'm going to take Ohio State minus 30. Yeah, I that, that, think that'll be a pretty easy game for him. Next game is Boise State at Washington. This uh, Washington is minus 14. The game is at the Seattle uh, Alaska Airlines field at Husky Stadium in Seattle, Washington. Uh, so Boise's traveling a little ways. No, not too far. Games at 330. Um, you know... Washington and Boise State, you know, 
What the Huskies, you know, they were 30, they scored 39.7 points per game last year. Amazing. Ooh. You know, they went 11 and 2. <laughs> they won the Alamo Bowl. The Broncos went 10 and 4 last year and they won the Frisco Bowl and they scored 29.5 games. So this game is going to be super high scoring. You know, both these teams are ready, amped up to go. They're both really quality teams, too. Um, I'm surprised the spread's not a little closer. I know I'm taking, you know, I'm taking a little money, uh, money a lot on these teams, but these are two quality teams, you know. Boise State ain't no yeah. slouch. Not uh, much. And with all with all things due, they're not traveling too far. You know, they go, you know, they're gonna not be, you know, in a different time zone by any means necessary either. So I think I'm gonna take Boise State plus 14 and a half just because they got the propensity to put up these numbers. They're coming off a quality season last year, you know. Any of the, those games could have went their way, so they could have had a better record at that too. So, I'm taking them with the points, man. I I trust them, man. I trust them. What you think? I like it. I I, I love that pick. Um, I didn't know they did bowl games in the first week of the season, but we'll call this the Chris Peterson Bowl because he coached at both of these schools. Uh, had a good track record at both of these schools. Uh, went to the college football playoff with Washington, Boise State. You know the famous Statue of Liberty play won the Fiesta Bowl. Um, I hope he's in attendance at this game. If he's not, that'd be kind of weird. But I'm going to take Boise State plus the points. Um, I think they just figure it out, you know, grind it out. They probably lose by 10 points. So I'm going to take uh, Boise State. Next game is UTSA versus Houston. Now, this game, is, Houston is a plus one and a half. This game is going to be a tight game. It's hard to pick these close games. You know, it's might as well pick the money line on these games. UTSA, you know, it's a non-conference matchup. They finished 11-3 last year. They're trying to bid off their bowl game appearance. The Cougars are 8-5. Um, you know, the teams played in week one last season, and the Houston won 37-35 in a triple overtime road win. So, wow. with all that being said, this one's a toss-up. This one is a toss-up, but it is. It's flip a coin, flip a coin. I'm gonna pick UTSA to get their revenge from last year, man. I think it's gonna be a closed game again, but I'm picking UTSA. What you think? I'm taking UTSA too. I don't know much about these two teams, I'll be honest. But uh, I like the Roadrunners. They, they kind of have cool jerseys. Um, I don't know much about Houston. Uh, I think they still have that left-handed quarterback UTSA. I'm not sure, but if he's there, I'm I'm taking them. So give me UTSA minus one and a half. Okay, nice. Next game, Penn State versus West Virginia. Penn State is minus 20 and a half. Big, 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 big favorites in this. You know, this is pretty easy for me. Penn State's a powerhouse. They're 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 number seven in the country, you know. Um, yeah, West Virginia is nothing special. I mean, they're, they're they haven't really done much in a long time. They got a five-star quarterback coming in, Drew Alar, you know. They're ready to kind of get back to the college football playoffs, and I think they're going to take this easy, easy money. Give me the Penn State. What you think, man? I'll make this quick. Yep. I don't know much about West Virginia either since Will Greer, Will Greer was there. Uh, 20 and a half points. I think Penn State covers easy. They probably win by 30. Okay, next game is South Carolina at North Carolina. Border rivalry here. Border rivalry. It's gonna be a good game if you were at if you're at the game, you know, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be lit. Um North Carolina is minus two and a half, so it's gonna be a close, you know, pretty close game. Uh it's gonna be, you know, I think a high scoring game. Uh North Carolina knows how to put up the points, but you know, the defenses are very they're, they're not it. You know, if you're looking for a defensive game, you might as well go watch the Iowa game. Don't watch the yeah. game. Um but if I had to pick, you know. Drake May, the brother of the Tar Heels basketball player Luke May, is, you know, he's under the helm right now, playing Spencer Rattler, the former, like, you know, the former guy that they I Oklahoma they thought was gonna be all all the whole all world quarterback. All that in a bag of chips. Yeah, and his, you know, it was no chips left. It was off brand lays. They didn't <laughs> get the right ones. Um, but I'm going to take I hate going against my squad, but I'm going to take South Carolina in this. I just, you know, Spencer Rowler has done good at South Carolina, so I'll give him that, and I'll I'll take South Carolina in this. What do you think? I do, too. Yeah, no, I, I like, uh, you know, 
I thought Spencer Rattler would be a lot better coming out of high school. You know, he's, he's kind of a douchebag. He, he needs to get that under control from his days back at QB1 uh, from the Netflix show. But, you know, he's a little older now. Um, you know, SEC versus ACC. You know, Drake made good quarterback. But I just think South Carolina has the power to pull it out. And if, if they're getting points, give me that. So, South Carolina, lock it in. Lock it in. Next game, Middle Tennessee State versus Alabama. Big spread here. Minus 40. Woo! All right. So, Two. Middle Tennessee State is not no pushover. Now, Alabama's number four in the country, but, I mean, and, and the Middle Tennessee State beat number 25 Miami last season. They haven't played Alabama 2015, and they Alabama won 37-10. I'm actually going to take Middle Tennessee State plus 40. I think Alabama, you know, they're 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 not the top of the top dogs no more. You know, like they kind of got humbled a, la- a couple last couple years. So I'm taking Middle Tennessee State plus 40. I just think that they're going to lose, but not by no 40 points, man. They got some respect. They got to put some respect on their name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is. I think at flip of a coin, too, 40 points is insane. We don't even know who's going to be the quarterback for Alabama. They are kind of falling off, you know, but do they have that chip on their shoulder? Are they kind of hearing it in the media where, oh, you're falling off? You're not as good. You haven't been to the playoffs in a few years. Uh, Nick Saban's pretty good at getting that chip on their shoulder. Um, you know, I just can't bet against the juggernaut Bama as much as I want to. 40 points is insane. Uh, so can you guys please just win by 40? I'm taking Bama. <laughs> At least 41 41 would be better. We'll see. Next is Tulane versus South Alabama. Tulane is minus six and a half favorites. They're number 24 in the country this year. Um, You know, they scored 36 and a half. They they scored 36 points per game last year. They went 12 and two and won the Cotton Bowl, which is, you know, I won the Cotton Bowl too. So that means something, you know, I'm a little. Oh, okay. Where's the ring at? Did you get the ring on? I I got the rings with me. They in the back right now. They in the back right now. All right. right. Um, The Jaguars, you know, South Alabama Jaguars went 10 and three. Uh, They lost the New Orleans Bowl and they scored 31 and a half points. Uh, This one, I think, you know, Tulane, they're number 24. I mean, I'm going to buy into the hype a little. I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a close game, but I'm going to take Tulane, minus six and a half. I don't really know too much about them, to be honest with you. I don't watch Tulane basketball, football games. Um, I've never been to Louisiana, so I'm just going to take them. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know much about South Alabama. You know, I watched maybe Tulane once, and that was the Cotton Bowl last year, but they beat a good USC team. Um, I believe so. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll take Tulane, minus six and a half. They're ranked this might be the sucker pick, but I guess I'm a sucker. Six and a half, two lane, lock it. I'm just a sucker for love, sucker for love. Last game, cool gun, baby. That's Rick James' reference if y'all didn't get it. Last game on the list for us is Coastal Carolina versus USC. Chip Kelly is coming back. Ugh, I'm not a big fan of the coach. And they are playing at the Rose Bowl against Coastal Carolina. They're traveling all the way across the country to come play. And Coastal Carolina is plus 14 and a half. Underdogs. Oh, UCLA. Hmm. You know, they always start the season off solid. I'll give them that. They do start the season off solid every year. Coach Chip Kelly's a way better college coach than he was pro coach. Proving it, you know, time and time again. So I'm not going to doubt his college stuff. Uh, you know, I think that they're still deciding on a quarterback, actually, um, UCLA. But I don't, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter who you play. I think Coastal Carolina, they're gonna have the elements against them. They're gonna, they're really gonna try and, you know, it's 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 hard going across the country like that. It's hard. That's just the travel. I look at that a lot. The in depth be- be- behind that, besides the game, you know, they're trying to, you know, get on the new s- schedule, time schedule, jet lag, the whole nine. I just think UCLA, you know, this is this is home cooking for them, man. Eh? Home cooking. They got, you know, the nice weather out there. They got, you know, they've been living in the climate. They got the they got they just got the mojo to take this game way far beyond 14 and a half, in my opinion. They got one of the best coaches in college football. It's their game, honestly, to lose. So I'm taking 14 and a half, minus 14 and a half, UCLA. What you think? Um, I don't know much about UCLA. If, if they don't know who their quarterback is gonna be, 
you know, I think I'm going to lean Coastal. Uh, I think Coastal still has Grayson McCall at the helm, and he, he's been a good quarterback um, over the past, you know, three to four years. He's been there for a while. Um, he came on the scene beating Kansas in the first overall game that he was a starter, um, and he's been pretty, pretty great ever since. So I'm going to take Coastal plus the points. They're out in L.A. living. Um, so don't be partying uh, tonight and uh, get ready for the game tomorrow. But I'm going to take Coastal plus the points. All right. It's going to be a late one. Starts at 1030 Eastern. So if you're watching that game on the East Coast, you know, I don't know. Get your coffee for that one, too. But, yeah, y'all, we appreciate y'all coming through. You want to see the full videos. Go to my YouTube page, DeAndre McKenzie. Bailey ain't got a YouTube page yet, but we got to start cranking these out. Appreciate y'all. Until we got a couple games Sunday, actually, college games Sunday, until the NFL season starts. Then we're going to pop you all these NFL videos, but um, stay tuned. Bend safely and responsibly, and uh, deuces.